हेलो फ्रेंड्स तो सो फार वी हैव गॉन थ्रू द कंसेप्ट ऑफ डैम्पिंग विशेष डैम्पिंग एंड वी लर्न द कंसेप्ट ऑफ थ्री डिफरेंट काइंड ऑफ सिस्टम्स नेमली ओवर डैम्प्ड क्रिटिकली डैम्प्ड एंड अंडर डैम देन वी हैव डिस्कस द कंसेप्ट ऑफ लॉगरिथिक डिक्रीमेंट इन दैट पार्ट नाउ वी विल टॉक ऑफ सम kind of dampers in the in some kind of damping in that case uh, right the first damping that we have been discussing in these lectures is was about viscous damping right viscous damping in the starting i said that why we are interested in viscous damping because it gives a first order linear equation uh, which is easier to solve and uh, to understand the dis- different aspects of vibrational analysis right in the same way if we uh, uh, the another important which uh, important term which comes in our mind that viscous damping has been uh, discussed in a very broad manner now i'll introduce few of the damping types which are also essential if we go further in terms of vibration analysis of uh, different uh, elements and we can use the combination of these kind of damping right so the second kind of damping is we have here is dry friction and uh, the another name of this is coulomb damping coulomb damping now this coulomb damping we won't go that much detail of forming differential equation and studying various thing we will just broadly discuss uh, this second uh, version of damping now as its name suggests that uh, we are talking about damping through friction that mean how friction can help to damp out the vibration present in the system while it goes through the process right so for rough surfaces Uh, as we know dry friction coefficient decreases somewhat initially uh, as we are increasing the velocity right and uh, then it is practically constant although it does decrease very slightly with further increasing in velocity also so uh, for lubricating surface uh, if you are talking about lubricated surface the mu the friction coefficient is proportional to the velocity this is uh, this is what the mechanics information that we will use further we will discuss uh, the uh, coulomb damping right so as a engineer or vibration analyzer we are all only interested in two aspect the first one is right these two aspects are common in all type all kind of dampings right so the f- first aspect is the f- frequency of damped oscillation frequency of damped oscillation right the second aspect that we are dealing with is the rate of decay of these oscillations right these oscillations now so these are the two thing that we are interested in because as i said the damping is been put out into the system to reduce the amplitude of uh, uh it is the amplitude of vibration and as it goes ahead it should be vanishes to zero this is what our all endeavor right now what is the difference between this frictional damping and the viscous damping that we have been discussing right viscous in case of viscous damping we using uh, in practical situation some kind of a fluid dashboard right i mean you are trying to damp out the vibration present in the system with the help of some uh, fluid system right L- like i can show you one example here suppose this is a machine placed over here and here is the fluid filled up to observe the vibration right now while the uh, this machine comes into action and start vibrating up and down right so these vibration can be observed by this uh, fluid compression so this is what kind of fluid dashboard we have 
right so this somewhere represent the viscous damping right now the viscosity of uh, fluid in that case plays a major role to damp out these vibration another similar case we can discuss here is for uh, dry friction damping suppose a block is moving in back and forth direction right here it, it, it does not have that gap it is attached with a spring right let's take a common example out here now if we give uh, motion in this direction right in this direction and after certain amount of extension of this spring this block will come in equilibrium right because that frictional force present here does not allow this to move back inside right so this is what the equilibrium position now if the mass uh, further displaced towards right direction and friction is trying to you know put that block back in that equilibrium position again so this is how that damping is involved right so higher the uh, value of friction coefficient higher the damping we have in terms of friction but it certainly has a limitation so we can say in general situation it provides a aid accompanied uh, with the viscous damping or other type of damping which helps to reduce the level of vibration within the system right now it can also alone deal with the vibration present in the system we are not certain about it that every time we need a uh, it as a as a auxiliary damping system right so now let's talk about uh, the differences that uh, viscous damping and coulomb damping are having right now okay the first one is if we can quote it right uh, so if you remember in viscous damping the body if we go by the equation in the amplitude term we have a term with negative e power right now what it represent that the body once disturbed from the equilibrium position finally comes to rest right and the time it takes to come to rest is certainly infinite because we are certain about the graph of e to the power x right uh, no no it has gone wrong a little bit uh, we had that uh, amplitude curve in this in this way right so it is diminishing one by one and if we join the maxima of this curve we can see that in the time axis it will take infinite time to touch the curve but it is not the real situation in 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 real time it will be happen in some finite time but it takes a little longer than we are thinking right in case of coulomb damping right in case of coulomb damping the body may finally come to rest in equilibrium position or in displaced position depending upon the initial amplitude and the amount of friction present so uh, higher the value of friction coefficient higher the value of the uh, uh, the coulomb damping we can have in the system right so we know we are not interested much in coulomb damping until and unless it is necessary to analyze it in a, analyze it in that level so we will just deal with the uh, viscous damping cases right and uh, this is just a kind of intro, uh, introduction right few other type of dampings are also present we won't discuss about it but uh, it is essential to name it here the third kind of damping is we have here is solid or structural damping <clears throat> right so this is one of the important types of damping this is since it occurs in all vibration system subject to elastic restoring forces right so it is uh, it we can have it in uh, in uh, springs also right so in a general case if we talk about if we if two similar system are set vibrating such that their initial stress amplitudes are the same then each will diminish equally in amplitude on a per cycle basis right now the another type of damping we have is slip or interfacial damping right so i hope 
its name gives you gives you some suggestion that we are in this sort of damping we are dealing with some kind of uh, damping which is related uh, to the materials microscopic structure right now if we say that uh, you know with the, uh, we talk about kind of uh, layer thing like uh, for example take a beam out here which has been consisted with two different kind of material or same kind of material or, or of uh, having two layer and subjected to pressure right like this now so this is uh, this is having the value p now consider this uh, this name it as a and this one is as p right so consider the cantilever beam b on which an another bar a is placed right so these two are pressed together with the help of force p now uh, if, if we can see in this now when the system is set to in vibration like so this particular portion start vibration in upward and downward direction right so now the a continuous slip between these two surfaces will take place right so here we can see that that slip ultimately consumes the energy of vibration taking place in in, in the system right now if if a very high pressure has been put up over the system right so there is no slip right because it does not have that chance to you know create a slip between these two layers so we can say that there is no damping or no energy loss in that case right so these these are the four uh, damping system which is uh, essential and as i said that vicious damping is the most important thing that we need to take into account right now so friends here is the end of uh, uh, free vibrations right uh, we have gone through only over the basic concepts if you have any kind of doubt you could put in this suggestion box or comment box right there now we will move towards the uh, forced vibration right forced vibration as i said it is just a result of if a uh, external force has been imposed uh, over the system to cause it into the vibrational motion right so force vibration again i won't go in the derivation area and other thing i'll just try to give a uh, an, an idea that how it can be practically implied in terms of analysis in this chapter we will cover we will end our discussion with vibration measuring instrument right first analysis part will go just like we have discussed few cases in free vibration right now also we will discuss few cases for forced vibration as well right the case will again remain same right we have a system like this uh, here is one spring with the stiffness k and uh, here is one damper has been attached to the system and a mass m this is here right now one force f naught sine omega t has been implied here right now because of this force the sinusoidal force a displacement of x unit took place now just to restore the system we will have a force of a spring which is kx and similarly a force of damper which is cx dot and this is what is the direction of acceleration right and if you talk about the newton second law equation for this kind of system we will have mx double dot plus cx dot plus kx restoring forces are on the left hand side and the disturbing force which is the sinusoidal force which is f sin f not sin omega t right now already this part solution i have written in the free vibration case and i hope you all have read it now so this is one solution as we know we are going to solve the differential equation of various kind 
it generally contains two part uh, namely complementary function and for solving that right hand side we have a particular integral uh, complementary function has been uh, calculated earlier in the case of free vibration now our interest is to calculate the particular integral to get the complete solution of uh, this kind of uh, equation right if we solve it i will directly go to the result we have here uh, the amplitude in that case which is x equal to f naught by k under root 1 minus omega upon omega n square right we could use a larger bracket out here and plus 2 xi omega by omega n square right okay now what does it signifies right i hope notations are very clear omega is the frequency with this system it is vibrating omega n is the natural frequency right again the another term we are having is jai it represent what damping ratio and uh, f naught and k are having their usual meaning now just uh, focus on one case uh, if we say the uh, the uh, the deflection the deflection in the case of uh, zero frequency right uh, this, uh, let us say that omega becomes zero then this force will be f naught and uh, zero deflection says that there is no restoring force in the damper so we have uh, let's say x naught is equal to f naught by k. it is just a simple replacement to create understanding about the displacement and we'll try to analyze the system based on resonance and other activities uh, based on this deflection concept so now our equation will be reduces to x naught root 1 minus omega by omega n square plus 2 xi omega by omega n square right now so this is our equation uh, with the help of this we can calculate the uh, why uh, uh, the amplitude of a simple force vibration system which is accompanied with a spring and uh, 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 this damping part right now now here we can see that uh, the cf as we have calculated earlier which is in the term of uh, this kind of thing if you remember xi omega and t and uh, sine of under root 1 minus xi square right, and so on plus this is the next thing we have here is x naught sine omega t minus phi divided by under root of 1 minus omega by omega n square plus 2 xi omega by omega n square right now so this is what the complete solution and we need to keep one more thing in mind this is for the under damped system this is for the under damped system right since this is the uh, solution for under damped system now so this contain two system as i said complementary function and uh, the another part is uh, this uh, particular integral that uh, second part right now as it contains uh, it this is this i have written for the explanation explanation regarding the amplitude uh, decrement of that system in case of force vibration so the, since we are dealing with the first part it contains a term which has negative power of e 
so this suggests that uh, it will decay with time and vanishes to zero ultimately although it take a very long time but ultimately it it vanishes right so this part in engineering practice is generally called the transient transient vibration it shows the case of transient vibration now what happens with the second part is seen to be a sinusoidal vibration as it contains the term of uh, trigonometric ratio sine right so this is termed as steady state vibration this is what we have to keep in our mind a steady state vibration right so even if the transient die out with the help of the damping present in the system there is one more part of vibration which is steady state vibration and it remains in in the system right so we can also say that the transient vibration take place with the damped natural frequency damped natural frequency right whereas the steady state vibration will take place with frequency of excitation frequency of excitation this is what a uh, what the little information regarding the first case of uh, the uh, idea of force vibration now let's talk of this uh, uh, second part considering that uh, this uh, particular thing this transient vibration has died out now what we will see we will discuss few graphs as well as uh, uh the uh, magnification factor or something right how the amplitude varies with different situation if we see in that case we written the equation earlier this is x is equal to x not under root 1 minus omega by omega n square c square plus 2 xi omega by omega n right now if you see it here and try to analyze this equation uh, we can make a plot right here to see the different variation right this side it represent omega by omega n this side this represent let us say this is the ratio r so the vertical axis will represent this r right now if we say xi is 0 right if if omega by omega n is 1 right the first case we will discuss omega by omega n is 1 right if and also name it here this is 1 this is 2 and this represent 3 it will be enough to discuss now for this situation and also we have the same situation here the ratio of uh, this x by x not this is what r right so here it is 1 okay 2 uh, 3 and 4 now suppose we started with uh, omega by omega n is equal to 1 which suggests that omega is equal to omega n this reflects the situation of resonance right as we know at resonance amplitude of the system is infinite infinite right so for zero damping this curve is going to be in that direction right in this way right as the amount of damping is going to increase right those vibrations are going to come in somewhere the finite level right this is what all our requirement that we are not going to deal with the resonance situation and just for the safe side we never want that this system frequency matches with the um, natural frequency of the system to achieve a amplitude of 
infinity right so this is not what our requirement is smaller the amount of damping which is represented by this damping ratio right here right uh, it 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 uh, it facilitate the situation of uh, uh, resonance within the system so we need a moderate amount of damping which certainly saves the system to getting into the zone of resonance right so as we are going to uh, increase the amount of damping we are bringing sorry we are we are bringing down the system at a low vibration level right in a similar way i hope this uh, graph explains a lot and this is now here we can say that this is the case of xi is equal to 1 which represent the case of critical damping and over it the system is under damped right and here we can say something xi is equal to 2 or 3 which represent the case of uh, over damped system right and this is what the case of let us say xi is equal to 0 where no damping if no damping is present certainly the system goes into the state of uh, in the state of uh, uh, vibration and excess vibration precisely we can say and that equation will vanishes to x not by 0 x is equal to so we have the systems amplitude with infinity although in practical situation it is not infinity but we are terming as infinity because it cause it ultimate disruption or breakdown of the system right this term is called as magnification factor magnification factor right okay now so this is what the what a general idea about the resonance right so now what conclusion we can make out of these things in terms of its uh, in terms of its practical use now here we can say first point i would like to write them for your notation also so the first one is at very low frequency and i request all of you to note it down right uh impressed force right impressed force which is f impressed force f balances the spring force second point is at resonant frequency right right so resonance frequency that means when omega is equal to omega n right so that impressed force now we can write in short this these are some essential point for the design purpose impressed force is balanced with damping force and similarly third part at wave very high frequency where omega is greater than greater than omega n right impressed force balances by the inertia force inertia force right now so these are few points regarding the force has been applied right and the first differential equation we written in terms of different forces it represent that how uh, the force has been balanced of of various part now this is the another uh, balance of force information uh, with respect to their frequency variation right and this is essentially a important part of uh, of uh, of designing stage
right so uh, here we are going to end this lecture at this particular point the next time we will go through some more examples or unbalances of different kind of rotatory and reciprocating part which uh, uh, rotary part which which uh, which makes some sense and give you uh, a sense of how we can deal with the uh, deal with the next part of vibration analysis for rotary and reciprocating part and this uh, will now uh, carry forward the lecture towards the more practical applications. Thank you.